Could the PS5 Pro be Sony's biggest failed console launch? Not only are the consoles still available for pre-order, but now reports of people canceling their pre-orders have emerged. Yeah, that's right. We are hearing that some people are canceling their pre-orders. Lots of posts on X. And of course, we have this here from Tom's Guide. It says, I just pre-ordered the PS5 Pro and I already regret it. Here's why. Spoilers, I may have committed to Sony's new console for a weird reason. He says, well, I only went ahead and did it, didn't I? Despite the fact I recently wrote that I was struggling to get excited for the PS5 Pro a month later, I've literally just pre-ordered Sony's supercharged console. Saw seeing, seesawing? <laughs> it takes mood shifts are giving me whiplash at this point. So appropriately, even though I've now committed to buying the most powerful PlayStation ever just 24 hours after placing my pre-order, it's entirely on brand for me that I'm already semi-lamenting the decision. Right now, I can probably imagine that you're currently screaming at your screen, just cancel your pre-order then, you damn fool. And that's an and that's entirely reasonable argument to throw back at me. Yet, at, as someone who re really likes buying the latest gaming tech, even when he's seemingly not massively excited for said tech in this case, I can't deny part of me does want a PS5 Pro, although a larger part of me worries I won't use it at won't use it that much, seeing as I own a gaming rig with an RTX 4090. I think it's interesting, like he goes through here, obviously talks about the uh, PS5 Pro 30th anniversary launch, the limited uh, supply of these, all the hype around it, how it is styled after that original classic PlayStation. Of course, we've talked about that a lot on the channel, how you can uh, get one on the second restock. Uh, he's, he's Now he's getting into the meat, right? We're talking about here, it took an utterly shameful screenshot above. Yes, that really is a disgusting eBay scalper trying to sell a limited edition PS5 Pro with a couple of pads for 10,000 pounds, which is absolutely insane. We've seen uh, much higher <laughs> here in the US on eBay as well. It's absolutely mind boggling how much people are trying to get out of these things. Worse, it's mind boggling how many people are paying upwards of $5,000 for one of these consoles. I can't even imagine paying four to five times the retail price for, for one of these PlayStation 5 Pro 30th anniversaries. Um, and so why did he do it? He says, you know, one of the rain, main reasons I pre-ordered the PS5 Pro was to deny at least one scalper getting the predatory hands on one before they suckered in some lifelong PlayStation fan into fan to massively overspend on it. Of course, he admits in the past with the PS5 launch, he over, overpaid for one uh, by about 150 pounds in order to get it on launch day. It's super interesting. I myself have fallen guilty to this in the past when the original PS3 went on sale. I really wanted one, wasn't able to get one on pre-order. So I purchased one on eBay for a thousand dollars. That's the only system I ever bought from a scalper. Uh, obviously that was forever ago. That was on the PlayStation three and it was for that original PlayStation three fat console, uh, which had the backwards compatibility and all that fun stuff. But here we're seeing somebody who literally purchased the PS five pro primarily to prevent a scalper. I don't know if that is worse than FOMO or not, because yeah, the scalper doesn't get it. He doesn't get to make profit, but you also took one off the market, preventing another customer who potentially would have wanted one. So yeah, if you don't want it, cancel your order. But here's the other problem. You didn't need to do it, right? As we mentioned earlier, if you go to Sony Direct today, we are, what, five days past the launch of the PS5 Pro pre-orders. 
and they are still available. Unlike the 30th anniversary collection, which sold out in a, right around an hour for all of the, the goods and you know within minutes for the PS5 Pro 30th anniversary, the standard PS5 Pro pre-order is readily available. That probably is one of the first time that I can remember that a PlayStation launch console didn't sell out the pre-orders. I mean, even the PS4 Pro, which is similar to this one, where it's a marginal increase in performance, sold out the pre-orders. With so many people being suckered in to buy the PS5 Pro Standard Edition simply because they missed out on the PS5 Pro 30th, are we going to see more cancellations of the PS5 Pro? I'm super curious. If you bought the PS5 Pro, are you now having regrets? If so, let me know in the comments. Of course, we do have a list of up to 55 games that are currently on their way as PlayStation 5 Pro enhanced. I want to know, are these good enough? Do these justify for you the purchase or keeping your PS5 Pro? Of course, we have right out of the gate, Alan Wake. We have Assassin's Creed Shadows. We have Cube VR, Demon Souls, Dragon Age, The Veil Guard, Dragon's Dogma 2, Dynasty Warriors Origins, EA Sports College Football 25, EA Sports Football Club <laughs> 25. We have Empire of the Ants. Uh, Enlisted, F-124, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Fortnite, Gran Turismo 7, Hogwarts Legacy, Horizon Dawn, Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered, which is the new one coming out, obviously. Uh, Forbidden, Horizon Forbidden West, Kayak VR, Mirage, Lies of P, Dragon, Like a Dragon, Pirate Yakuza in Hawaii, Madden NFL 25, Marvel Rivals, Spider-Man Remastered, Spider-Man My Miles Morales, Spider-Man 2, Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater. I got to say, on these Spider-Mans, they better. I mean, obviously, those are some of the big exclusive titles. If it's a Sony exclusive, they better have gone back to the publishers and the studios that work with them in order to make sure every one of those is enhanced. We have Mortal Kombat 1, My Little Universe, Naraka, Blade Point, No Man's Sky, Pro Baseball Spirits 2024, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, Redacted, Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil Village, Retrieval, Rise of the Ronin Spine, This Is Gun Fu, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Star Wars Outlaws, I don't think even a PS5 Pro enhancement can save that game, Stellar Blade, Test Drive Unlimited, Solar Crown, Towers of Ag Agazba, Agza Agazba, whatever, uh, The Callisto Protocol, Crew Motorfest, First Descendant, Last of Us Part 1, Last of Us Part 2 Remastered, Until Dawn, Warframe, War Thunder, Wolverine, and World of Warships Legends. So it's interesting to see some of those mobile games getting an enhancement. Is that enough for you? To me, it seems very, very lackluster on the list of PS5 Pro enhanced games. Worse, we haven't been provided a list of what enhancements are for those games. We've mentioned before that PS5 Pro enhanced simply means it can go from something like 1080p to 1440p, still at 30 frames per second, and be considered PS5 Pro enhanced. It can go from 1440p, 30 frames per second, to 60 frames per second, and still be considered PS5 Pro enhanced. Or you could go from 1440p 60 to 2160 30 and be considered frames enhanced or PS5 Pro enhanced. These are nuts. Like, there is no guarantee that your PS5 Pro enhanced game is actually going to be 2160p at 60 frames per second. Then there's also the questionableness of that enhancement isn't even worth it. Of course, 30 to 60 frames, you may see some improvement in the smoothness of the animation. But when you're talking about uh, some of the uh, AI enhancements to the resolution when they're showing things like trees 100 yards away and those leaves going from slightly blurred to nice and sharp. 
are you going to even notice that when your entire attention is focused on the character and the action right in front of you? Some of these things don't even make sense. For that reason, obviously, I think the PS5 Pro is a, a bit of an overprice, overreach, and not enough horsepower of an enhancement to justify rushing out and buying one of these for the average consumer. Of course, I picked one up. We'll do some reviews on it here. Hopefully, you'll be able to see if you already have a PS5, you don't need one of these things. It's $700. It's with no disk drive, purely digital only. You're throwing in another $80 to get the disk drive in order to embrace physical. And then on top of that, if you need the stand, that's another $30. All that was included with that original PlayStation purchase uh, back in the release, uh, initial release several years ago. So really, really uh, would agree with some of these people that are having regret who did pull the trigger. And maybe, just maybe, you should think twice and think about returning that console. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Appreciate you watching until the end. Would love us, uh, for you to hit that like button. As always, thanks for subscribing. And until next time.